What's up guys, Shane here from Figurec 3D Printing and today I'm checking out the Anycubic 3 Combo. Welcome back everyone. So, as you can see, I'm in a new space. I finally moved. Uh, it took a long time this summer to get things sorted, but now that I moved, I don't have anything. So I went online and I went ahead and bought the Anycubic Cobra 3. It looked really, really cool. Um, I saw a few videos a few months ago. Some people had done some content on it, but I really wanted a multicolored printer and I thought this would be a good entry level. I sold some of my printers when I moved earlier this summer, so I used that money to go ahead and buy this. Anycubic did not send this to me. This video is not sponsored in any way. This is just uh, me buying something that I think is cool that I really wanna check out. So I actually got two boxes here. So this is the Anycubic Cobra 3 combo. It also came with this box here. And this is uh, some of their filament. So it's any cubic filament. It comes with their peach fuzz, spring leaf, tropical, tropical turquoise, and interstellar violet. Um, and the whole thing behind this is there's like a Pantone. I don't fully understand all of it, but they're like Pantone colors. Um, but this came with the printer, which I actually didn't think about. I didn't, actually didn't know when I bought it. I bought it for about 345, I think was the end total. Um, so really good price. I think you can get it. I think it's a little bit more on Amazon, but it's not too bad. And in here, so this combo, so let's talk about the combo here, okay? So this is a multicolor printer and it has a, what they call the Ace apparently, and it's the Anycubic um, Color Engine, A-C-E. So basically, uh, it is their AMS. I'm gonna put this down on the floor because I can't, I don't think I'll be able to take this out of the bag here. Oh, I'm gonna be temporary stuff. Okay, well, obviously, well. Okay, what do we have here? So, okay, so we have our book. Uh, we have the standard parts, things like that. A little bit of filament, some PTFE tube. Um, LED component kit. Oh, they give you like a little project kit, which is pretty cool. Uh, we have a bunch of power, two power plugs, because this needs power for both the ACE and the printer. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, it's like some type of interconnecting cable. Uh, here is the extruder. That is cool. So it's four filaments in. So you have a lot less purging. Uh, it's a volcano style nozzle as well. Oh geez. Okay, let's put that back in there. <laughs> um, so we have our extruder. Uh, here is the LCD screen, looks like a touch screen. Some bracket. Uh, looks like a filament spool if you're gonna do single spool printing. That's that done now. Let's put this up here. I love the way it's packaged. So here is the ace. Let me get this off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here's the ace. We're gonna set that over here for a moment. I'm gonna get this, leave it off. Lots of closed foam here, and then we can pull this off. Okay. Oh, well that. Okay, those guide rails are um, juicy. And here is the ace system. So now we're gonna take a look at the book and see what we need to do here. Um, this is gonna be great, because I don't think this one. So I bought this not on Amazon, so the book is not in English at all. <laughs> but I can tell at least enough about it um, that we can figure this out. Okay, I think before we pull out the ace, I guess we should probably get it all hooked up. I kinda wanna try this as a single print and then I wanna kinda try it without. So let's go ahead and get the power onto this thing and let's see how a single print looks. Ooh. English. 
We'll do global. Oh, it's gonna ask me to hook up some Wi-Fi here. So I did skip the Bluetooth part, so I'm gonna go ahead and say, enjoy your 3D printer. Um, so insert the disc. Oh, it's gonna do self-test now. You see that, there we go. Okay, so it's now going through and doing a leveling test. I believe it does a five by five grid. It doesn't really said that anywhere yet, but that is currently what it is doing. Okay, next up, the printer is gonna start some residence compensation. So it wants to make sure that it is on a stable surface. It's on a desk right now, which is pretty stable. We're gonna hit continue, confirm, and please don't touch the printer. And now you can see that head is shaking very fast. Hard to show on video here, but it is shaking ever so fast right now in order to check all the resonances of the printer. Oh, we can hear that. Oh, see, there's that part that came right off. So this part here on mine is broken. So that's why that was loose when I pulled it out. Two of the tabs have broken. So I'll definitely have to reach out to support about that. All right, and now that it finished the vibration, compensation on both the extruder and the bed, we now, I think, can do the first print. So let's check it out. All right, well, now that that very impressive little Benji is done, we're gonna go ahead and add the ACE on. So we're gonna go ahead on to our next uh, steps here. So it seems pretty straightforward. Um, for the communication, the communication line needs to get connected. All of the Bowdens need to get connected. Here's all of the filament tubes. Here you can fit four spools of filament. You can do, I've seen uh, some of the videos from other people, they're using cardboard and using plastic spools, which is great. Um, there is a heated compartment here down in the back. I don't know if I can actually access it here. Um, but again, it is a heated compartment, which is absolutely great if you have filament or uh, if you have filament like a nylon or something like that, this would probably help with that. I mean, you're not printing in an enclosure, so that kind of rules out some different filaments. But uh, if you're in a place where it rains a lot or something like that and you have a really high humidity, you wanna make sure that your PLAs especially remain very dry. Otherwise, they will become very brittle due to um, them absorbing so much moisture. From looking at the printer and this alone, it looks like you can add two of these to a single printer. So you could do up to eight colors with one of these, where I think bamboo you can do uh, four or more. I don't really know, I've never had a bamboo, but um, I know you can do more than two with bamboo. But for AnyCubic's first entry, the fact that you can do two is pretty interesting. So we have the four of those connected. We now can use the interconnect. So it's this cable that came. And we're supposed to plug the, the four pin. So in the front of the printer, then we have a four pin slot. And this comes around the back to the six pin port on here. So you're kind of limited to this, how far you can have this thing go because of that cable. It would have been great if this cable would have been routed in the back, um, to give it a little more space. I mean, obviously you only have so far that the PTFE tubes can go, but um, and that's definitely something that you could solve with different PTFE tubes. I don't know what the tuning of this machine is like, but uh, it's something that definitely could have happened. Is this on? It is on. Okay. So now that it's connected and on, Ah, okay, so my screen here changed. So we can see right here it changed to information about the ACE. 
So that is cool. We have a closer look here at it. We'll open that up. Open this up. We can see inside here's our four ports for our filament. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to use the filament that came with it. We're gonna load that in here and see how that process goes. Okay, so all I did was insert the first one and it starts flashing and it's chewing it in. Um, and I guess now it's good. It has not gone into the tubes at all, but is definitely loaded and it was simple. So uh, right here now, Oh, it actually even knows that it's green. Interesting, I wonder if these have RFID in them or something, um, but it already knows that that is green. So I'm gonna get the other three of these loaded and we'll take a look. Yeah, this definitely has some RFID in there because it knows all four colors in order that I just put in. So you can see it's still doing something with them. Oh, it's loaded. Oh, okay, it's loaded them all to right here. So that's about a foot outside of the unit itself. They're preloaded in there now. So I think what I need to do now is get a file going, which I don't uh, have. So I'm going to go ahead and model up something real quick or in their slicer and see what I can figure out here. So I did set my colors in the slicer and now it's asked me to color match to make sure that what I picked in the slicer is what I want it to be here, uh, which is pretty cool. So I know, again, I know what I set it as. I try to set the colors as close as I could. It's making sure that's correct. Great, so now I can just go ahead and hit print and it's gonna copy the files and then get started. I did go ahead and add in uh, the box right here beside it so that when it does do the little poops, it's gonna go hopefully into this box and I won't have too big of a mess when I get up in the morning because this is gonna take five hours to print this model. So we'll come back once it's done. All right, so we've just finished. It has taken five hours and 25 minutes to complete this four color Flexi Rex. Let's see how it comes off. I have not touched it yet. And oh, and then there is all of the poop for the print. Uh, I just put the box beside it because it like super yeets that stuff out. Um, so we can grab, peel off. And just like that, our Flexi Rex worked perfect. Still even warm. This is the Prime Tower. That default, it uh, adds to the print, which I don't think is necessary, so I'm gonna be experimenting with that in the future. But for right now, at least I have one print finished. Let's talk about the ACE system. So it works pretty well. But I've noticed with these full spools, I had three snags while this was printing. So that five hours actually took about 14 hours because I went to sleep. Now what happens is, as it pushes the filament back out, sometimes it loops over multiple spools, kind of like that. And then when it goes to pull it again, it snags and just like that, it snags under the spool. Uh, so what I've done is I went ahead and I loosened up each spool a little bit so that the filament has some space to spin on the spool. None of these rollers are motorized, so it's just the filament needs somewhere to go and it needs to have some slack in the spool. Once I added the slack, no more snags, life was good. But it took me those first three snags to figure out this is the problem. So just kind of be aware of that, but otherwise, seemed to do pretty well. Everything stayed warm. I got a print, at least for the first one. 
Okay, so that is the build and the first prints, both a single color print and then a four color print. Overall uh, quality is pretty good. Can't really complain. I mean, it's it's excellent, honestly. It's for a for a printer out of the box, no tuning whatsoever. It works great. I used the built-in profile that was in their slicer. Uh, just added in those couple filaments. Fairly intuitive. Again, I know my way around printers. For new people, uh, I think the slicer, figuring out how to add the ace will be a little difficult. There might be a guide somewhere. I tried looking around. I didn't really find one right away. Um, but if I find one, I'll make sure that links for that are down below. Um, it definitely will be a shock to people when this thing shoots out the filament. When I say shoot, I mean it shoots at almost two feet out to the right of the printer. So you definitely need to, I guess when you're looking at to the right, um, it's left though, but yeah, you definitely need to have some type of catch. I use the box from the printer just down on the floor uh, as a temporary catch. I'm gonna 3D print some type of box container thing for that. So to be able to combat that, again, I'm gonna try to see if I can figure out how to, if I can, eliminate this prime tower because it's not needed uh, in my opinion. I mean, it's already extruding out the filament with the poops and pushing it out. I mean, you would need this if you didn't have that, in my opinion, but again, I just need to experiment and test out, and I will definitely do that and let you guys know how it goes. I might do an intermarry intermediate video on this. Uh, I'm not sure yet, or maybe I'll just post on uh, social media, because I hardly ever post on Instagram anymore. Happy with the first go at this. I'll definitely um, be doing a lot more, because this is the only printer I have right now, so I'll be playing with it a lot. Now, if you want to get this, last I saw this on Amazon, I think it was around 430. It's about 30% off right now. Full price price for the kit is 600 and change, I think. Um, but again, I'll have links down below where you can pick this up on either AliExpress or uh, Amazon or on their direct website. Uh, I wouldn't mind getting the camera to put on here, just get some time lapses, but it's sold out everywhere. And then yeah, I just have the one broken part here, that front shield. It's not a deal breaker, it just keeps little's fingers, little people fingers out of the fan in the front. Uh, there's plenty of these on printables and in their own own uh, STL marketplace that you can get a replacement and just print it out for that. So I'll decide what I end up doing with that. So this is the Anycube Cobra 3 with the Ace and their Pantone colors, the four colors. Oh, I forgot to say, there is actually a little booklet in here. So it tells you about each one of the filaments um, and their different colors. So again, I think the colors are really great. I want to try out some of the other things. I think Joel did something about like Pantone colors, labeling, putting them on top of each other, something like that. I'm unsure. Definitely want to look more into that. But yeah, I'm super stoked to have a multicolor system that seems to work so that I can start doing some cool multicolor prints. There'll be a lot more filament. I got a few here, got more coming soon. So stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you want to check this out, check the links down below. Any resources or things that I found, I'll also put down there if you're just curious and trying to find out about the printer. Otherwise, have a good day, happy printing, and I'll see y'all next time.